The wisdom of the Bhagavad Gita can be understood from many different perspectives, historical, traditional, philosophical, etc. Today, we will focus on the inner meaning of the narrative of, and its inspiration for our life. At the beginning of our talk, we would like to say that we are no scholars on the Bhagavad Gita or Hindu scriptures in general. However, we have a deep reference for this wonderful book and the insight it offers to the reader. Bhagavad Gita, the song of the Lord, is the gospel of the Hindus. It is the most important part of an epic poem, the Mahabharata which tells us about a lost kingdom. Arjuna is the rightful heir to the kingdom, but his cousins had conspired to steal it from him. Arjuna is about to enter battle to win it back, but is held back by his doubts, reluctance to fight his cousins and friends. Arjuna does not want to fight his cousins even though they are selfish and greedy. Krishna, his charioteer, speaks to him and reveals during the conversation that he is not only the longtime friend of Arjuna, but that he is the Supreme One. Krishna, the voice of God, tries to convince him to enter the battle. Have you ever wondered why Krishna encourages Arjuna to fight the battle when the Buddha and also Christ both always speak about peace? Isn't this a paradox? Not when we understand that the story of the Bhagavad Gita can be seen as the description of an inner process of transformation. The battleground is within us, in our heart. And so is Arjuna. He is the classic hero. He symbolizes our seeking for liberation, the yearning to become conscious in a new way. The legend tells us that Arjuna is a prince, which means that a royal, a royal legacy is waiting for him. We have this royal legacy in our heart. It is a spark of the divine. It is also called the lotus or rose of the heart or Atman. Within Arjuna, the seeker, this royal principle Atman is radiating. It is the voice of Krishna. Don't we all feel an inner yearning for something we do not understand and cannot name? We do not know how and where to find it. And still, there is a deep certainty that nothing is greater than this. In his pursuit to understand, Arjuna is supported by Krishna, his divine friend and counselor. Arjuna, the seeker, recognizes this new and entirely different influence intuitively but only in rare moments. Arjuna is in great emotional turmoil and distress about the looming battle against his cousins. He has not yet open yet to hear Krishna. This is also our situation. We sense this other divine spark, Atman, within us and become slowly aware of it. The radiation of the divine spark slowly becomes stronger. This influence is symbolized by Krishna. It is the growing new consciousness in the seeking human being. We are often not ready to hear this other voice within us. As Arjuna is not ready yet to hear Krishna. Life with all its distractions Challenges and turmoil keeps us preoccupied. In the Gita, the place of the decisive battle is Kurukshetra, which means holy place to pilgrims. This place 
is in our heart. The heart is the center of our personality and also where the one spark of the divine spirit, Atman, is present. It is the center of our microcosm. We as personalities have our physical and subtle bodies, the etheric body, astral body, and mental body. Our eye is what we perceive as our consciousness, our thinking, our emotions, our drive to action. All of it is part of our nature being. There is also our microcosm, but we are not the microcosm. We inhabit it. We as nature beings are three-dimensional and transient. The microcosm and the divine spark are not part of this nature order. They belong to a different eternal supra nature. The microcosm could be described as incomplete. When it is complete, then the glorious true human being can manifest again. But this is not possible for the microcosm by itself. It needs a personality, us, as an instrument, so that the eternal true human being can unfold again. This is the true task of our personality. But we are not aware of it. The eternal microcosm is like the lost kingdom mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. We cannot connect to it with our familiar state of eye consciousness. We just live our lives and see our eye, our own best interest as the main purpose of life. We follow the aspirations and needs of our eye and try to live life as well as possible. But when this other voice in us becomes stronger, we begin to look at ourselves in a different way. We begin to question our eye and all its doings. This evolving self-knowledge is an important step leading towards our true task. The microcosm needs a personality that does not identify through its eye consciousness, but has its center of consciousness in the divine spark, an Atman. The divine spark in our heart is the key. It's the seed, the blueprint and the guide. But to be able to hear and follow the inner guide, the noises of the eye must diminish. What is our I or ego? The ego is everything we identify with, what makes us up, all our characteristics, our desires, our opinions and beliefs. It is not negative, it is simply who we are, how we are present in this world at this time. An inner spiritual path is not about becoming a better person or improving our ego. No, the ego or I has to become less. It has to allow the divine principle in us to unfold. It is about a fundamental self-revolution. The Gita is a description of this inner battle the self-revolution that needs to take place in the heart of the candidate. Who are the enemies we have to fight? They are all the different facets of our ego, our self-maintenance, our cherished values, our inclinations and beliefs. They are deeply anchored in our familiar nature being. They are like dear relatives and friends. There is also the father of Arjuna, hundred cousins. He is the old, weak and blind king. He symbolizes our personality, 
which is unconscious of its true task, namely being the instrument for the manifestation of the true human being in the microcosm. Although the old king has enlightened advisors, he doesn't listen to them. He follows only the whims of his sons, Arjuna's cousins, especially the most powerful and greedy oldest son. This son wants the kingdom for himself. It is the ego consciousness that rules the personality. Can you see how well the Bhagavad Gita describes our inner situation, our personality that is weak? and unconscious and only ruled by the forces of the ego, the me, myself, and I. The sons, the ego forces within us, want the kingdom, the microcosm, for themselves. But the kingdom belongs rightfully to Arjuna, the new soul power within our heart. Here lies our task. Everything that makes us out as a nature human being in this world, everything we identify with, we have to let go, to regain the lost kingdom, to become again the true human being. This is the self-revolution, when the ego-identified consciousness voluntarily makes room for a new consciousness that has at its center the divine spark. In this process, the personality, this is us, becomes the instrument for the manifestation of the glorious true human being in the microcosm. It is the regaining of the lost kingdom of the Bhagavad Gita. It is the reason for Arjuna's battle. We have Arjuna in us. It is our seeking and yearning for the divine, the lost kingdom, and our willingness to follow this inner voice, the voice of Krishna. As seeker on the path, we increasingly let go of everything that binds us to the old state of ego consciousness. It requires consistent perseverance. We observe and recognize ourselves with all its doings and grow an awareness of this new element within us. Then the new impulse, Krishna, can be heard more clearly. After a phase of preparation, the seeker on the inner path has to come to a decision. Does he, she, want to continue to strive for the light? the new consciousness, or stay in the old egocentric patterns of self-maintenance. This is what the battle, the inner battle, is about. On the eve of the battle, Arjuna visits the battlefield to see both armies. Arjuna, the seeker on the inner path, looks into his or her own inner being, guided by Krishna with the support of the new soul power. Arjuna is completely discouraged and does not want to fight his relatives and friends. He sees no future for himself without them. He first doesn't listen to Krishna, but is totally absorbed in his despair. Every candidate on the inner path will experience this phase of inner distress and great doubt. Many fairy tales describe the same situation. These are all stories and legends, but at the same time, they are a description of our inner path. Arjuna isn't left alone in his despair. As long there is the inner desire to do the only right thing, Krishna, the new soul will speak to him. The new soul will speak to us and help us. Throughout the Bhagavad Gita, we repeatedly read, where Krishna is, there is victory. 
The Bhagavad Gita tells us how Arjuna is taught by Krishna about the requirements of the path of inner rebirth, the liberation from the wheel of life and death, and the true essence of, the, of this nature order. In a moment of elevation, Arjuna sees a foretaste of the glory of the state of the true human being. In the heart of the candidate is the gate through which the new soul power, Krishna, will unfold. This force will then rise from the heart to the head. The candidate receives a new understanding and a totally new insight. The Bhagavad Gita tells us how Arjuna, the seeker on the path, grows in understanding and becomes sufficiently strong and prepared to take on the battle in the holy place, the heart. At the end of the narrative, Arjuna is decided and ready to take on this battle. He says, my delusion is destroyed. My doubts are gone. I will now act according to your word. He fights. His battle is victorious because he always trusts Krishna. Each of us has an aspect of Arjuna and also an aspect of the greedy cousins and the weak old king. Each of us experiences struggles and doubts on the path. Each of us has inside Atman the rose of the heart and therefore Krishna. We hear this voice and are invited to follow him and thus take on the battle which initially we would like to avoid. But we are not left alone. We receive abundant and reliable help from this voice in our heart. <laughs> 